Well, thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Carolyn Miller. Now, she's an ergonomist, and we've asked her here today to try to resolve some of the problems we're experiencing here in the plant with regard to workers' health and safety. Hi, everyone. Before I begin speaking, I'd like to hear from some of you regarding your workplace environment and any problems you may be experiencing. Why don't you go first? Uh, sure. I'm a supervisor, and uh, one of the main problems my area is experiencing is that I have many employees who've been on the job for more than 20 years, and some are assigned to light duty, and then I don't have anyone available to do the more physical jobs. And, and trying to figure out who can do what, like, is becoming a real problem. Right. And what about your area? Well, I've been working here for 17 years, and basically we're all getting older, and the work's not getting any easier. It's still very labor intensive. And with so many people off sick, the rest of us are having to pick up after each other. And really, I think that's just making even more people sick. Right. Mr. Collins? Well, from the management side, we have way too many people off on either compensation claims or sick leave. Not only is this not good for our employees, but it's a major concern for head office. These are all typical situations. I hear these kinds of complaints over and over again in my line of work. Part of the problem is companies call me in after the fact, after the number of sick leave and compensation claims become more than is acceptable, so to speak. And even when I am called in to consult on individual cases, the workplace continues to change after I leave, which makes it hard for me to make recommendations to reduce future injury. And we have other challenges. Government has brought in new ergonomics guidelines that we need to follow, and as a company we don't know how to go about making changes. And there's no way this company can afford to have an ergonomist on staff full time. Which is why I'm about to introduce you all to a new way of thinking. There are many challenges facing today's workplace including labor shortages, an aging workforce, chronic injuries, rapidly changing technology, and frequent changes to the organization of work. These challenges, coupled with government regulations and guidelines, and limited access to professional ergonomists, leave many workplaces asking, how are they going to cope? One way to address these widespread challenges is for companies to work with a professional ergonomist to introduce a proactive rather than reactive approach to preventing work-related injuries, like carpal tunnel syndrome, lower back pain, and tendinitis. Using a proactive approach means building the capacity at all levels in the workplace to identify and reduce injury hazards. One way to do this is through participatory ergonomics. Participatory ergonomics lets the ergonomist and the company take advantage of the knowledge, experience, and expertise found within the workforce. One of the basic principles behind PE is that an employee is an expert on his or her job. PE relies on actively involving employees, workers, and their supervisors in identifying hazardous movements and activities. It also tries to enhance the capacity within the workplace to examine job tasks, identify problematic movements or activities, and to collaboratively explore ways to change these jobs to reduce the risk of injury. This kind of approach can also result in improvements in productivity, quality, morale, and comfort. PE requires the involvement of a full range of stakeholders, including representatives from management, supervisors, and employees, health and safety committee members, and in unionized workplaces, union representatives also need to be involved. Involvement means becoming educated on how to identify and reduce workplace hazards, assisting in the development of intervention strategies, and helping to design, adapt, and implement the recommended changes. A participatory approach to ergonomics is important because employees, both workers and management, who are involved in efforts to identify and reduce risk, are more likely to make recommendations that are not only feasible, but that are more readily accepted. Involving employees in the process has the potential to improve the quality of their work life by giving them a more active role to play within the company. All right, great. What did that ergonomist person have to say? Oh, basically, she wants to hear from us. We'll be asked about our working conditions, how we do our jobs, what problems we see, even what changes we'd recommend. Really? Usually they make the changes and then we have to do them. I know. But this way will be different. 
I think it'll be good for us and for the company. We'll be looking for volunteers to be part of the process. I think I'd like to do that. You'd be really good at that. I think so too. It's going to come down to the plant and have a Leadership is also an important part of PE. Management and supervisor participation shows employees the project is being taken seriously, while at the same time ensures management concerns are taken into account, thereby increasing the likelihood of action and success. One style of participatory ergonomics involves developing an ergonomics team or ergo team within the workplace. The ergo team acts as an anchor for the larger PE program. Its role is to provide reports and recommendations to management through the Workplace Joint Health and Safety Committee. The ergo team consists of representatives from both management and staff and is supported by a professional ergonomist. A proactive ergo team approach to PE should be part of a longer-term strategy for reducing the risk of soft tissue injuries. It requires substantial investment up front and a high level of commitment on behalf of both company and employees. While there might be some short-term benefits, the real benefits will come over a period of time. Here are some of the key requirements in order to implement a successful PE program using the ergo team approach. Substantial buy-in from employers and upper-level management. Paid time away from production for ergo team members to train, do job assessments and develop reports. Direct employee participation. Substantial buy-in by shop stewards and unions in unionized environments. A focus that is broader than just reducing musculoskeletal injuries. A focus on generating solutions that are practical, cost-effective, and that have health benefits. If your company can commit to these six crucial requirements, then ask yourself these two questions. Does your company want to reduce the number of staff injuries, sick days, employee turnaround, and claims to workers' compensation, while at the same time improving productivity? And is your company and its employees willing to commit the time and effort needed? If you answered yes to these questions, then the ergo team approach to participatory ergonomics may be the right approach for your workplace. For participatory ergonomics to be successful, it must have a strong foundation. And that begins with a commitment from everyone in this room. Although only some of you will be asked to join the ergo team, we really need assurance that everyone will be respectful of the process and its outcomes. As a company, we feel that participatory ergonomics is the right approach for us. From the management level, we are committed to making this work. And we believe that the ergo team approach will give us the best results. All of you have the knowledge and expertise that Caroline needs in order to turn our workplace into a safe and healthy environment for everyone. Speaking on behalf of the union, we're in full support of this program. We really appreciate the fact that our members are involved and it takes into account their knowledge and their experience. As a union, we believe strongly in any proactive initiative. It involves the health and safety of our members. Carrie, what have the workers been saying in your area? Everyone seems to really appreciate the fact that this is going to be a team effort. They like the idea that they're going to get a say in the recommended changes. I think you can expect support from just about everyone. Great. Is there someone here from maintenance? I am, and I've had many discussions with my staff concerning the project, and in theory we think it's a good idea. Uh, as the ones responsible for making the technical and mechanical changes in our plant, our concern is whether or not well, will we really be able to implement the changes that are recommended? Well, that's a valid concern. The reason the ergo team approach works so well is that it involves workers from all areas of the company, including maintenance. And remember, the idea is that a team member from your unit will be reporting back with any recommendations, so you'll be fully aware of what the recommendations will be. Does that answer your concerns? Yeah, and I think I'm really going to be interested in see how all this works out. Well, that's good to hear. Well, we have a lot of work to do, so let me continue on. With what's Knowing that everyone is supporting the process will give the Ergo team members an increased level of enthusiasm and dedication. This, in turn, will foster feelings of ownership and pride. We narrow it down to 12 names. Uh, when selecting your Ergo team, it is essential to include management, workers, and maintenance. Joint participation and appropriate representation can help ensure that the team's priorities and approach reflect the concerns and mandates of each group. 
There is no ideal number in terms of participants. It will vary depending on the size of the workplace, the resources available, and the scale of the initiative. However, a team composed of relatively equal numbers of representatives from management and workers is essential. There are many key traits to consider when selecting your ergo team. Ergo team members should be permanent employees, have positive personality traits and skills, and have a broad range of work experience within the company. They should have the respect of their peers, be supportive of change, and be seen as fair and reliable. Potential members should be in a position to facilitate organizational and behavioral change, and be committed to working with the team over an extended period of time. Other essential qualities to look for are strong leadership skills, fine listening and organizational skills, and good oral and written communication skills. They need to work well within a group setting and be open to discussion. More generally, they should be forward-looking and committed to the project. Okay, so we're going to get started. Dave, would you mind handing these out for me? Oh, sure. That's great. So as you can see, our goal here was to create a democratic team with equal representation from management and employees. And I think we did a really good job of that. I hope you're all excited to get started. So you're the ergo team. This means you'll be responsible for the day-to-day -day operations related to this project. And communication is vital. It's important to create a communication strategy within the team and to other key personnel. If knowledge isn't shared between group members and other key people, this project won't be a success. I suppose one way to do this is to schedule regular meetings and take minutes. Exactly. Then the minutes can be distributed to the stakeholders. It's also a great way for members to keep track of any action items that may stem from the meetings. So now let's go over what's expected of the team over the next little while. Once the Ergo team is selected, the ergonomist provides extensive training as he or she guides the team through the first job evaluation. The Ergo team is responsible for continuing to keep all employees informed about who the team is, what their mandate is, their activities, and the results of those activities. Learning basic ergonomic principles and tools for job analysis. Appropriately, ethically, collaboratively, and systematically identifying areas of the workplace where there is clear evidence of risk of injury. Selecting areas for interventions. Asking for volunteer employees who work at the selected intervention area to willingly participate in an analysis of their jobs. Interviewing volunteer employees to gather information on their workstation and job task. Observing and videotaping volunteer employees performing their job tasks. Carrying out a detailed job analysis of the selected area with a focus on movement and repetition. Presenting the gathered information to workers and supervisors in the intervention area and exploring with them the best ways to reduce risk. Developing a report of their findings and making recommendations for ergonomic improvements to the company's health and safety committee. The ergonomist plays a key role in developing the team. He or she acts as a facilitator and is responsible to train and guide the team throughout the entire process. The ergonomist's goal is for the ergo team to eventually become more self-reliant in the sense that the team is able to identify and evaluate potential hazards in the workplace and then make recommendations for change to the organization. Remember, it is ultimately the responsibility of management, not the ergo team, to implement new workplace policies and procedures. Their role is to provide reports and recommendations which will be forwarded to management through the Workplace Joint Health and Safety Committee. At the same time, the ergo team does not replace the Occupational Health and Safety Committee or safety officers. It does not take on or reduce the responsibilities of management and workers to ensure that the workplace is safe from hazards. These are requirements that are already mandatory by law and regulations. In order to succeed, participatory ergonomics using the ergo team approach requires commitment, dedication, time, and effort. But the potential benefits it can offer a company are substantial. If the approach works, over time, ergonomic principles should begin to permeate through the day-to-day -day operations of a company. The atmosphere will shift, the mood will change, and ergonomic assessments will become a routine part of the job of many in the plant.